The Bear, the Piano, the Dog, and the Fiddle, a reading by Mrs. McGee. Hello, boys and girls. It's Miss McGee, your proud principal. If you all remember, I read a story to you like I do every year at the start of the school. Who can remember the book that I read to you? Well, if you can't, hopefully this will trigger your memory. It was called The Bear and the Piano. It was such a great story about friendship and about how friends and family will always be there for you no matter what. And also for us to be proud of one another and the unique talents that we have. Well, I was very fortunate because Miss Adams, one of our music teachers, shared another version of this story with me, or I should say a new story that I want to share with you today. So it is called The Bear, The Piano, The Dog, and The Fiddle. So let's just take a moment to relax and enjoy this story. Think about the similarities that you see between this story and The Bear and The Piano, or maybe some differences, or the message. Is it similar or is it different? Let's enjoy the book and find out. Hector and Hugo were best friends. Hector was a fiddle player and Hugo was one of his best or his biggest fans. Over the years, they had good times, bad times, and even some crazy times. Here they are right here. But now times weren't so great. What are we gonna do, Hugo? Hector said as they walked home. My act is yesterday's news. Who'd wanna listen to an old fiddler like me when they can watch a famous world playing, piano playing bear? Hmm, I think I recall that bear. Hugo woofed to say that he would, but Hector just sighed. <sighs> I'm too old for this game, boy, he said. I guess I'll never get to play in a big concert hall like I dreamed. And with that, Hector packed away his fiddle forever. Now that Hector didn't go out to play music, he spent most of his time watching TV, listening to audiobooks, sleeping, sleeping, and sleeping some more. Look, hmm, I don't know if you can see closely, but I see what his friend is doing. Hugo, hmm. Hector and Hugo's neighborhood was so noisy, so Hector kept the window shut when he slept. But one night, he forgot. In the early hours of the morning, a strange noise woke him up. Hector crept out of bed tiptoed down the hallway and pushed open the door to the roof. Can't wait to see what he saw. Hugo was playing Hector's fiddle and the music Hugo was making was toe-tappingly, finger-clickingly, whistle-blowingly awesome. Hector's tummy hurt a bit when he saw everyone in the neighborhood nodding along, but then he saw something else how much his friend loved to play. The next morning, Hector took Hugo, taught Hugo all the tricks of the trade he had learned over the years. Before long, a crowd had gathered. News of the incredible fiddle playing dog spread and one day a very famous bear came to watch. Bear told Hugo that he was starting a band of musical animals. He invited him to come on tour and play his fiddle for hundreds of thousands of people. As Hugo looked up at Hector, his tail wagging, Hector's tummy started to hurt again. He was jealous. I guess you should go, he said, trying to smile. It's the opportunity of a lifetime. I remember that struggle Bear had too when he was asked to go play. Hugo's tail wagged even more as he packed to go away with Bear's big band, making sure the fiddle was safely stowed. 
bestowed. Hmm, I wonder what that word means. I wonder if you know. Does anybody know? If it was safely stowed. That means packed away, so nothing would happen to it on this trip. But Hector began to have second thoughts. Don't go and join that silly group, Hugo, he said. We don't need them. Hugo pushed his head on Hector's knee, but Hector pushed him away. Fine, said Hector. I'm sure you'll be back with your tail between your legs. You're not even that good. <gasps> oh, no, it makes me sad that Hector's treating him that way because he's jealous. Hugo picked up his suitcase and left. Suddenly, Hector felt awful. Wait, Hugo, he cried. I'm sorry. But it was too late. There's Bear's big band bus with all the animals. I think Hector realizes what he did was not right. With Bear's big band, Hugo toured the world playing spectacular shows to sold-out crowds of adoring fans. Hugo was the star of the show with Bear on the piano, Big G on the drums, and Clint the Wolfman Jones grooving on the double bass. Millions of people watched them all over the world on their televisions and computer screens. Millions of people including Hector. As he watched, he missed making music. He missed playing the fiddle. But most of all, he missed his friend. Ooh, tonight Bears Big Band. One day Hector saw some posters announcing the Bears Band was playing in the big concert hall in his city. Hector wanted to go. But then he remembered the horrible thing he had said to Hugo. What if Hugo didn't want him there? But Hector bought a ticket anyway and found a spot up front right by the stage. He noticed that Hugo had a new fiddle and he wondered what happened to his old one. But then the band started playing. Hector couldn't believe how mind-blowingly, toe-tappingly, finger-clickingly awesome the music was. Hugo, he shouted, it's me, Hector. You're brilliant. I'm so proud of you. But Hugo just whispered something to Bear, who whispered something to the security guard. Then they continued to play. A few minutes later, Hector felt two big paws grab him. What's going on, he asked nervously. The security guards picked up Hector and took him to a dark corridor. Corridor, that's a big word like a hallway or an area between two rooms. It's okay, Hector said. I was going to leave anyway. Let me go. But the guards kept walking with Hector, squished between them, until suddenly they stopped and Hector realized where he was. Ladies and gentlemen, boomed a voice. I'm pleased to announce that tonight Bear's big band will be joined by a very special guest. I wonder who that special guest is. Please give a warm welcome to Hector. I'm told that our star Hugo wouldn't be here without him. As the crowd cheered, Hugo passed Hector his old fiddle. He kept it safe all the time. He woofed and wagged his tail. And as Hector took the field fiddle, he realized that though he and Hugo might have had some good times, some bad times, and even some times apart, they would always still be friends. Because good friendship, just like good music, lasts a lifetime. The end. So maybe you could take some time now with your teacher and talk about some of the similarities, some of the differences you saw between these two books by uh, Mr. Litchfield. And I loved, it almost was like this was a sequel to this book, which is a second version of the book written um, following the first version. So you can learn about that as well. And I also want you to take some time and think about, especially over the next couple weeks, who are your friends? Who are the people in your life that have, will last a lifetime? And have you taken some time to tell them how proud you are of them? Have you used the words, I'm proud of you for, or thank you for being such a great friend because, and remember, even sometimes those bad things may happen or there may be little rifts here and there. 
ultimately our friends and family will always be there for us and we need to support one another. So enjoy, I hope you enjoyed the story boys and girls. Have a wonderful rest of your day.